Well, see, we're investigating parts of the boat we don't normally investigate, Bev. Absolutely. It's, um... We've had some problems with our water pump for some time now. Um, occasionally it'll just go brrrp all by itself. And um, what we have tied it down to, the only explanation that makes sense to us, is that the valves that separate the low pressure side of the circuit from the high pressure side of the circuit have failed. Not failed completely, but there's leakage from one side to the other. So this pump is pressure activated. And if it detects a drop in pressure because you've opened the tap, then it fires the engine up and sucks water through from the low pressure side of the circuit through a valve. When you stop the tap, it stops the pump and the high pressure side of the valve has to stay pressurized because if it doesn't, you get a drop in pressure and the engine goes off again, the motor. Um, we're just sitting in there and occasionally it just goes brrrp, indicating that it has run the high pressure pump for a, literally a second. And what we think is happening is that the valve has failed and that the high pressure side is leaking back through the valve into the low pressure side and when it reaches a certain critical value, the pump fires off and fills it up. It's not a huge problem. Um, How are we fixing it? Replacing the pump. <laughs> no, no, short term, what have we been doing for the last two years? Turning the pump off and we're not using it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when you turn it on, the first thing that happens is it goes brrrp because the high pressure side has leaked out. Um, having a look at the pump, it's a bit crusty around the edges. Also, the new pump requires half the amperage of the old pump, even though it is the same flow rate and from the same manufacturer. So we've got the same flow rate, the same fittings, the same size. It should go in the same screw holes. Um, all the th pumps should line up. It's got the same wiring. It just requires half the power. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to take it out and also inspect the strainer here. And then we will have a look and see when I get it on the bench, and um, we'll maybe open it up and have a look. But the first thing to do is to take this one out and put the new one in. So what we'll do is uh, we'll, on. we'll go and have a quick look at the new pump because the new pump is the same as the old one. Okay, we're having a, a little bit of an argument here on Salty Lass as well. Are we? Uh, yes. Uh, I think what we should do is drain the tanks. Oh, no, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. You want to drain the tanks, you drain the tanks. So we can clean them out while you do it. I am sticking a softwood bung into the hole. And hopefully that will keep the water in the tank while I change this stuff over. Well, I, I like the easy option. I'm not one for making my life hard. Well, I am you, not... You, en you enjoy the hair shirt approach. I'm going for the easy one. Well, personally, I think you're going for the hair shirt thing. Well, but... you think it's hard to put a bung in rather than run the motor till we burn it out? Well, whatever. Regardless, I think we're going to... You're going to do the job, so we're going to go with your solution. Damn right. Yes. Right, so we've got the pump down here beside us. It's 12 volts, like the pump we have. It does 10.6 litres per minute, same as the one we have. It's a 30 PSI pump, same as the one we have. The big difference, like I say, on this one, it's 4.5 amps. That one in the back is 7 amps. The model number is slightly different. They're both from Sureflow. They both appear to have the same fitting. The hoses all appear to be in the same place. So I have great hopes that I'm literally going to undo four bolts in there, take these fittings off, plug it in, and do four bolts back up. It's a boat job. It won't work that way, but I'd like to hope that that's how it's going to come out. Yeah, that's a six. There we go. Oops. It won't be long till it goes off. Whoa! It'd be brilliant if you could turn it off at the panel. Come on! Turn the bloody thing off. I know. Okay, that one's in. Well, as you can see here in the wiring, um, we think this pump has been replaced or at least worked on at some point in the past because the wiring side of the pump um, looks a little amateurish. Uh, doesn't look like the sort of stuff we get from Bavaria. Because uh, I've never seen Bavaria use PVC tape the way I've seen amateurs use PVC tape. But it's good because it means we can just unplug this without having to cut the loom or anything like that. One thing we have done before we took it off, we made sure that the, the joint that connects to the high pressure side did fit this pump. And it did. So that means now we can safely remove the old pump knowing that the fitting on this side is good and we're hoping that the fitting on this side here, the low pressure side, is equally good. It's the same thread as the other side and like I say everything else in the pump appears similar. Quite like the rubber feet. I'll be interested to see if the other pump has rubber feet on the back. Well 
one thing's for certain, the old uh, pump is certainly crusty enough and um, while I was watching Beverly do various bits I saw a couple of drips coming from this seal and you can see that stuff has been coming out of the seal so this is clearly what has been going and wrong. Uh, could well be the seal but we've got a filter here so I'm just going to screw that off because we want to put the, clean it clean the filter this is and uh, put it back on but um, uh, we'll just need some PTFE tape um, because um, you know obviously to just um, put on all the nuts and stuff so I'm going to clean this filter now Well, I've unscrewed it and I don't know what I've got inside, but it certainly doesn't look healthy. That's actually on the pump side. Um, yes, that's on the pump side. So that's come from the pump. That's not come from the tanks. Yeah, it's some kind of plastic. But uh, yeah, we've got some kind of plastic deposit that's just been caught in this filter. Nasty. Well, I don't think it's, I think it's clean enough. I just, <laughs> I don't think. Given the, amount, given the amount of tank cleaner we've put through it over the years, I suspect it's absolutely sterile. <laughs> I think it's sterile too, but um, whatever it is, it's just not great. So, Bev, how did the um, fitting the pump go? <sighs> well, the pump is fitted. Um, there's a distinct lack of footage of the fitting process because you don't really want to see me screwing screws in with a screwdriver it's not really a very exciting video uh, the exciting bit happened later when I turned it on as a test thing and water sprayed out absolutely everywhere because we must have lost a grommet on one of the fittings and it took me quite a bit of hoking around and the boat was in uproar because I had every cupboard out looking for a grommet of the right size I finally found one and put it in that fixed that problem and then it turned out that the other end of the hose that I was fighting with the grommet had disturbed it and upset the fitting there so I had to take it all off and reset it and I got soaked, the boat got soaked, I had to clean it all out. I'm afraid filming took a rather bit of a back seat in that one. So what I've done uh, now, I've just done it, is I've adjusted the pressure. This particular pump has a pressure fitting on the bottom and it's this little screw here that you can see and by turning the screw in the appropriate direction, there's arrows marked on the bottom of the unit, you can turn up the flow rate or turn down the flow rate. And the pump came with the flow rate at minimum. Uh, so now I've put it into a more medium setting and that's better. The kitchen sink was okay, the galley sink was fine, but it's a longer path to get the water to root around the boat before it turns up in the heads. And so it needed more pressure. It was, it was pulsing a lot and you could hear it going brr, 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 as it pulsed. Now it's all sorted out and it's we're, we're happy with the, the flow rate we've got in the heads. So the job is finally done. It's all in. The connections are all sorted out. Um, the grommets are all in the right place. We've got the right flow rate. And it's also a bit quieter than the previous pump, which is just nice. Well, uh, Beverly um, removed uh, the water pump and uh, put in uh, a new one. But what I want to do is I want to see if I can uh, make this into a serviceable spare. Um, it's got so much crusty stuff. Even if I just give it a clean, see if there's a gasket that's uh, faulty and things like that. But at least it does work it's just the fact that the number of times it was burring was uh it was going like burr, burr, burr. you know it just increased uh to make it untenable to use and all this crustiness i'm sure that there was leaks but i let's... knew there was leaks i saw them <laughs> well i saw them too that is true so um i'm gonna um dissect it and uh see what we've got now, you've got a lot of experience doing these things, haven't you? Absolutely none whatsoever. Oh, dear. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, when you're on a boat, you know, you either pay somebody or you do it yourself. And I'm sorry, but paying people is expensive business. You're not going to pay someone to fix a knackered pump, which has been replaced. Exactly. Um, I've replaced it. It cost... How much did it cost, Bev? 60. 60 pounds. So... For engineers and stuff, you're not even going to get an hour's time of their time. So uh, it's just not worth it. Buy a new one. But for a, 
for us um yeah okay fair enough i can cope with that so i'm gonna go for the one where there's the most um crustiness shall we say beverly's been watching some mechanics videos just to help us um uh learn how to do mechanical stuff and um a very simple rule from them is do the worst screw first so yeah and we do like our power tools <laughs> now we're cooking with dynamite <laughs> i suppose to keep with gas not dynamite i know i don't know why i have that yeah that is that on yeah it should that's on in is it that's on reverse yeah well it has to be you can't put the thing on with it all night yeah, but what I mean is... It's up to you to check it. <laughs> this is a bit easier than messing about with the screwdriver, isn't it? It is. Ooh. What have we got? Hang on, I've got to find my glasses now. I can't see. Yeah. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad at all. I think uh, maybe if there was anything... I think there could have been like uh, here you've got dirt and stuff uh -huh. so it doesn't look as bad no it doesn't i just think um i just think it needs a good clean but there doesn't look to be a gasket oh still attached mm. it's not attached physically it's um attached can... electrically just leave it alone yeah gonna do I'm gonna play too yeah okay just keep these screws to this side yeah so the the seal here yeah but again you know it's nothing much I think a good clean Let's look at this to see if that is what I think it is I think that... so how does this thing work then ah that goes down look there's a little mm. hole in that. Mm. Yeah. And it's on a spring. Well, this is the uh, non-return valve. We think it's the non-return valve. What's those dark spots? Is that dirt? That's all dirt. That's, um, you know, I think some uh, WD-40 will be coming out at this point. Okay. Put that over there. Okay, since it's uh, okay. since it's calcium. Mm -hmm. Oh right, okay. We're we'll using vinegar. Well, Whereas... that's what they say dissolves calcium. It certainly does. This, this one's brake fluid. <laughs> brake cleaner. Brake cleaner. It's meant to clean just about anything. Yeah. It's very flammable, so do make sure that you um, have your hatch open. open. The muck and dirt has been cleaned out. The muck and dirt, yeah. Right, so let's put these screws in by hand, because some of them are screws and some of them are bolts. Yes. So the, the screws go on the outside and the, the big bolts go in the middle. Yeah. We still need to yeah, go back them out. Difficult to get to. That's it. Then we'll tighten my hand, yes? Yep. So one of the things that we have on Salty Lass, which is one of the easiest um, testing kits imaginable, is we've got a um, cigarette lighter and then we've just got the two wires on it and one is um, positive and the other is negative. Trust us to have two blacks, so that's why I have a little label to tell me that this is the positive. So I've got these, so I can put it into our cigarette lighter wire everything up and then what I'm going to do is just quickly turn on the um, cigarette light. It always looks like a, a the cat. accessories switch. I know it's accessories switch. <laughs> always looks like a uh, carrot to me. <laughs> Dodgy what? carrot. Carrot enable switch. Carrot enable switch but it's the accessories switch. So I'm going to wire that up and uh, just test it. Definitely works. Definitely. Well, it did do. It did do. I've wrecked it. <laughs> I'll just check that that was in properly. 
No, it was just the fact that it was yeah. dodgy. Okay. Right, right, so it works. It works. Right, well, so we'll put it back together again then. Yes, and it's working. It may leak buckets, but we'll not know that until we reinstall it. Yeah, but at least we've got a spare. And really, having spares on board is a great thing to have. 